I'm not quite ready here. Let me adjust the cat cam so that we're actually looking at the cat. Adjust the cat cam so that we're actually looking at the cat. Uh -oh. Adjust the cat cam We've got so that echo. we're actually looking at the cat. Uh -oh. Adjust the cat cam. We've got oh my goodness. Can we say noob streamer? Where even is that coming from? Hopefully you guys aren't hearing it still, but I'm hearing it. Hopefully you guys aren't hearing it still, but I'm hearing it. What the heck? Okay. That should have fixed it. And uh, I'm not sure why that was set differently than it normally is. But hello. I thought I would give this whole low latency streaming thing a try. And so we've got, hello, Fuzzy Nova. Thank you for joining me. Um, I wanted to give the low latency thing a try and I think I have it set up correctly, but I guess we'll see as we go along here. I'm gonna send out a quick tweet and then we can get started. It's not going to be testing today. It's not going to be like my last couple streams. I just, uh, I'm about to do a manicure and I thought, why not do it on stream and see if anybody's around and wants to hang out. So what's happening? Okay. Got that taken care of. I'm already getting thirsty because it's quite warm today, so. Oh, excuse me. So if anybody watching notices anything weird with the low latency, if there's an abnormal amount of buffering or anything else weird, please let me know. And, um, uh, you know, if it, if it's acting weird, I probably won't use it again. If it's working as intended, then it's kind of a nice uh, way to interact a little more quickly with the chat. So before I get started here, let me just grab some polish remover. And that's just going to be to clean off my nails and just in case I end up needing to do any cleanup. And then I've also got paper towel the beanie was trying to sleep on and I'm gonna have that just to uh work on I've also of course got my miracle mat under here just to preclude any accidents on stream so when I do my tutorials I always say to start with clean dry nails and I have talked about what exactly that means a few times in the past but since we're doing this all real time you'll actually get to see have of course washed my hands really well and done my nails with a nail brush. And now with the uh, acetone that I just poured out, I'm just gonna go over each one and give it a swipe. And this will make sure that the nail is absolutely clean and dry. There's no residue of any kind, any oil from your skin or even any soap residue. And I even like to give just a little bit under the tip of the nail. Make sure that that's all clean and that helps with uh, when you cap the nail for everything to stick. Hello Barbie dog, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna show you the color in just a second as soon as I get done here. It's a uh, ILNP Hollow and uh, Full Moon. That's the name, I was gonna say I forget the name but their box conveniently also has a label on it that was equally conveniently pointing toward me. So finish off that thumb, do just under these nails. I'm gonna have to be mindful. I've got a slightly more zoomed in camera today. My camera was cooperating with me, but that also means I need to be more careful to stay in frame. So um, ILNP polishes, I love nail polish. They come in this cute little box. And then inside we have the gorgeous polish. And I do apologize that my ring light is not ideal for showing off hollows. I also apologize for that helicopter if you can hear it. 
but this is a really gorgeous one. I think this is from their spring collection last year, and I picked them up, and then I never actually got around to using them, but they are very gorgeous. And instead of a peel-off base coat, today I'm going to be using Orly Bonder. I am probably going to be washing my hair in the morning, and peel-off base coat just would not be able to stand up to that. Uh, dealing with this thing <laughs> can be quite a long process and involve quite a lot of, uh, you know, your hands being wet. And if there's anything that's the worst thing for peel-off base coat, it's extended exposure to water. So... Bonder is my go-to normal base coat. I used to really have a favorite that they discontinued, but Bonder is pretty good. It usually gets the job done for me, and I don't really use a normal base coat that often anymore, at least for my manicures. I do use a normal base coat like on my pedicures because... No way in the world do I want toenail peelies popping off at inopportune times. So, I if, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. This is kind of an experiment. You know, I mentioned my last stream that I had uh, considered streaming just a, a normal manicure. And, you know, to keep an eye out. And I, I really appreciate that you guys have uh, joined me for this. But, I mean, there's not a whole lot to explain. I'm trying to be fairly careful and neat, but, you know, that's not always possible. And even when I'm just doing a plain manicure, I usually end up doing a little bit of cleanup with a polish remover and my normal small brush. Because, for one thing, I feel like the side walls of my nail, like not the bottom cuticle, but the side parts... I feel like mine maybe stick up more than other people's. It's really difficult for me to get close to the edge of the nail without also getting a little bit of nail polish on my skin. And since it's fairly easy to clean up, I usually try not to worry about it too much. The other thing is that, as you can probably see, my hands aren't always completely steady. I mean, depending on the time of day, depending on when exactly I took my meds, I feel sometimes like my asthma meds make me a little shaky. My hands may or may not be completely steady. So you can see, I've got a little bit of a tremor. Makes me feel kind of like an old lady sometimes, but... There's not really a whole lot I can do about it other than learn to deal with it. I know with the gardening. I uh, I hate gardening gloves also, but I know they're good to wear. But sometimes I feel almost like I'm more likely to break a nail if I'm using gloves because I'm not, I don't have the visual reminder to be careful of my nails. And I'm just going to give them just a minute to dry. I can already kind of eyeball it and tell that they're mostly dry. This base coat doesn't take very long. Hi, Caters. Thank you for joining us. Um... But yeah, I like gardening too, Fuzzy, and uh, my strawberries are coming in so nicely this year. Last summer was really kind of a crappy year. They never seemed to really fill in, and they really depend so much on the weather. And with getting between dumping on rain and then really hot days, they really seem to be liking it a lot, and I've got a lot of flowers. So for anybody that just joined us, we're going to be doing... ILNP Full Moon. It's a gorgeous, kind of almost duochromatic light blue with a, a lot of hollow that my ring light does not do the best job of showing off. And I'm not sure how many coats of this we'll need. Maybe we can get away with two. Maybe we'll end up doing three. I'm going to just get started and see. And uh, I've considered using these polishes also for a water marble. Ooh, that's pretty sheer. I bet I'm going to need at least three coats. Um, but this reaffirms my other thought, which was water marbling these over black. And I can tell right now that that would be really cool for this collection. Kind of a, kind of a weird formula. I feel like I'm not getting super 
uh, consistent coverage, but that might just be because it's the first coat. The only time you have nice nails is in the winter. Um, sometimes I feel like that too, but then in the winter, I'm also having to deal with them being kind of more brittle and more prone to breaking because it's so dry. Even with a, a humidifier running in the house, it just seems like there's no way to escape the dryness during the winter. Which kind of sucks because we have quite a bit of winter in Minnesota. And then we go right into summer. This year it feels like we didn't even have a spring. See, you're in South Dakota. You're right next door. So you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, like literally, I'd have to check the date. But I want to say that literally less than a month ago we had snow. And then we just got out of a stretch of six days of 90 plus degree weather. So it was kind of crazy. Um, as far as the actual manicure, the, the reason you guys are kind of here, I do usually cap my nails with like the first coat of color, not necessarily all the coats. And for some reason, I don't usually cap it with the base coat either, although that probably would help. And then I'll again cap the tips when I do the, uh, the top coat. Boy, I really hope I'm able to get this opaque. It's so sheer, but it's also so pretty. Oh, uh, any water-based top coats? Oh, on stamping, it can be really, uh, what's the word I want to use? Like, you got to be really careful with it with stamping, especially depending on which stamping polish you use. I always felt like the actual black Conad stamping polish was really prone to smudging. And I'm trying to think, I, I know there's a water-based top coat. I don't specifically have one that I really use. I want to say that it's by a company, and I may be mispronouncing this, called Little Ondine, O-N-D-I-N-E, uh, that I've seen some other nail artists talk about because water-based top coat is also good for uh, using like on nail foils if you don't want to use gel or on pigments and stuff. Um, the one that I do have is it came in a kit with the Sally Hansen pigments and it, it's not described as a water-based top coat. It's described as like a special effects top coat. But from what everybody else uh, said when they saw it, it appears to be a water-based top coat. So Moyu. I, I really like the Moyu Black also. Um, when I did a side-by-side -side stamping comparison... The Conad Black appears to stamp a little bit darker, but once you top coat them, they're pretty much indistinguishable. Um, Liz, hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, the one tip I would say, Barbie, for preventing streaking when you're stamping is like stamping polish usually dries pretty quick, but make sure it's really dry. And then when you apply your top coat, Try to like use such a light touch that the brushes of the top coat brush, the bristles of the brush, I should say, don't even actually touch your nail so that you're just kind of using that brush to guide the uh, to guide the polish on there and don't let it actually touch any of the polish, which sounds kind of tricky and can be kind of tricky. But since Sech Sechevit does have a little bit of a thicker formula, it makes it a little bit easier gonna get started on my second coat here i usually don't wait very long between coats oh that's nice i'm so glad this is looking more opaque on the second coat i think i'm definitely gonna have to do three but i was getting uh getting worried that this was gonna just be so sheer um but yeah when when i stamp and i i don't stamp as much as i used to and i am kind of making these thicker coats in the hopes that I won't have to do four coats, even though thicker coats can sometimes lead to bubbles, but hopefully I won't have that problem. Um, hosting. Caters. Thank you for the host. Yeah. Float the polish. Exactly. Um, streaking can really be one of the worst problems when you're stamping. And it's like you have this crisp, beautiful 
stamp design and then you add your top coat and you have all these little streaky marks of frustration that you really at that point i mean technically you could maybe go in there and try and like with a little tiny brush clean them out of the top coat i've tried it it's very difficult to do successfully i would say um so i try to just do like i said a really thick really thick coat and try to just keep the brush away from the design <laughs> your hubby stopped streaming so your channel was lonely yeah you know so far i've only been hosting and like rating after i after i stream but i probably should try to host more often just because i mean why not um i know that i always am so pleased to receive a host so I mean, an auto host would be just as nice in my opinion, because if somebody likes your channel enough to actually put you on an auto host list, I think that's really flattering. Yeah, rune stamp designs with wrong top coat. And I, I could easily see myself doing that because I feel like I've lost so much of my stamping, like, I don't know if you want to call it like knowledge or stamping IQ, because... I used to do it a lot, and then it was like I wanted to try really improving my freehand and concentrate more on water marbles and other, like, techniques. I didn't feel like stamping was something that I could really do good tutorials on, but um, I kind of miss it, and I found that some people really do enjoy a stamp tutorial, even if it's nothing uh, complicated. Today, Liz, we are just doing a, a manicure. We're using, a, what is this? ILNP Full Moon. And I just thought that I would give the low latency streaming a test with a little short stream and see if anybody was around to hang out with me. And luckily, I've got lots of people around to hang out with me. Uh, Barbie dog hosting is so like right now you're on my channel and you're watching my live stream. If I were not live, I could choose to host a channel and you would be on my channel still, but it would be showing their video. So usually most, most streamers, well, I don't know if I should say most streamers, like I really don't know that many streamers, but a lot of streamers will usually host when they're done streaming and sometimes raid to uh, give their viewers something else to watch and kind of share the love. Raiding is when you actually, instead of just showing their video on your channel, you actually send your viewers to that other person's channel. And um, I don't know how good of an explanation that was, but hopefully that uh, gives you a little bit of an idea. You'll, you'll see if you stay to the end of this stream, you'll see, cause I'll try to find somebody to, at least host and maybe raid. I like uh, raiding because just like hosting, it's just, I mean, I always kind of thought when I was watching streams as a viewer, like, oh, that must be so cool. That must be so cool. But now that I'm actually streaming, like it's even cooler than I thought to, to get hosts and raids and follows all that stuff. It's just like, I don't know, it tickles me. So, like I said, we're going to need a third coat here. And really even that may be slightly pushing it. On my shorter hand, like on my right hand, you're maybe not noticing it as much. But on my left hand, I think we've definitely got some uh, visible nail line there at certain angles. Which is when you can tell where the free edge of my nail starts underneath the polish. It's not fully opaque. But... I'm only going to have this manicure on for a couple days, so it's not like something that needs to look really good for a week. Mm. That's cool. I knew that there was a, uh, that that was coming up. I've never actually watched, like, I don't think the original Doctor Who. My mom swears up and down that we watched Doctor Who when I was a kid, and I don't really remember but I think when they do those kind of uh, 
it's kind of like a community event. I think that's so cool because, you know, it's just, I mean, it's, it's like this, except it's not live. It's one of your favorite TV shows. Excuse me. I haven't watched a ton of them, but one that is kind of similar is, for those who don't know, there is a Twitch channel that does nothing but stream Bob Ross. And Bob Ross is awesome. If you don't know who Bob Ross is, I mean, Google it. I think most people know, even though, you know, his show has, you know, not been new for a long time. He's been unfortunately dead for several years, but happy little clouds, <clears throat> no mistakes, only happy accidents, all that good stuff. Um, so you have friends that are on Twitch and those friends host your stream. Yeah. Sometimes friends or sometimes just like um if you're streaming a particular game you might host somebody that's also playing that game or if you're you know streaming creative you might st host another creative or i mean it it depends what your definition of friend is i mean i have a lot of people i would consider friends on twitch that i've never met in real life but uh yeah definitely it's a uh, it's it's also a way to like spark and improve community and grow community especially like when somebody that's running one game will host somebody that's playing that same game that maybe they've never watched before and they discover a streamer that they really like. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Happy little trees. I mean, I remember as a kid just being like legit fascinated and just in awe. I mean, I remember just like sitting cross-legged in front of the TV, like, Oh my God, this guy is awesome. So I'm going to get started on the third coat here. And I think even if we're still a little bit sheer, this is going to be my final coat. Because like I mentioned, I'm only going to probably have this on for two days, maybe three days. It depends. It depends what I'm streaming Saturday. I haven't fully decided yet if it's going to be another testing stream, in which case I may do the actual manicure after I'm done streaming or a couple times I've actually just done it the following day. Although that's not my favorite because uh, recording a tutorial and editing it and uploading it and doing all the YouTube metadata and all that stuff in one day is really kind of exhausting. It's like if I can record it on one day and edit it on another day, that's a lot easier for me. And... Uh, so yeah, depending on what I do on Saturday stream will depend on how long this manicure actually stays on. And I know I said originally that I didn't really wrap the tips after the first coat, but I feel like with this sheer polish, I'm almost already getting a little bit of tip pull before I've even put the top coat on. So adding just a little bit more polish around the tip will hopefully help keep it from looking naked after we top coat it. I do Barbie. I, uh, I'm not sure if I would have gone black or white to maintain the color, probably white would have been best, but I think this, this whole collection is this kind of, you know, opalescent, slightly sheer springy colors. I think they're going to look really popping over black. I think all the little color speckles will pop out and that's actually one of the things that's making it hard for me to decide what to stream on Saturday because just using this as a plain manicure I want to sit down and do polish testing with the rest of the collection and uh it is caters um I, I mentioned it's not shown to best advantage under my ring light but hopefully you can catch a little bit of a glimpse of the the sparkles and the rainbows and this is another instance where, you know, I, I started out my whole nail, nail art journey blogging and my blog is really very neglected at this point. Um, I've been saying I wanted to get back to it for longer than I'd care to admit, but you know, to be able to show pictures of a polish like this in a lot of different lighting situations, because this polish is going to look different in the house it's going to look different outside when it's sunny it's going to look different when it's shady different with the ring light different with a camera flash it, it's one of those things that is just 
it, it's constantly fascinating, even though it's just a plain manicure. And uh, I do, like you said, I, I it would kind of benefit from a base color. But on the other hand, sometimes I don't know how much a base color really cuts down on the coats anyway, because you got to do a coat or two of the base color instead of, oh, mother. that just happened i i'm not even sure what i knocked this nail into god mm. so i i really don't want to take off all three coats from this nail um so i'm gonna see if i can just like repair this with a little glom of polish in here and that that doesn't suck <laughs> i'm i'm not unhappy with that repair i think maybe just a little bit more no that's too much i can just kind of stroke it into the rest of the polish it's a little bit of po unplanned polish surgery here It actually almost looks worse on camera than it does in person. But I'm going to I'm going to accept that. I'm going to deal with it. And I might add one more layer on that nail to try and help cover that up. Um Mega X Is that one of the holographic um uh, holographic toppers? I feel like I've definitely heard of that one before, but like when I placed this order, w when I got these polishes, it was actually my first ever order from them. And it was like I was going through the website and I was just putting every single pretty thing that I saw in my cart. And then when I went and looked at my cart, I was like, oh, I obviously cannot spend that many hundreds of dollars all in one haul. So let's take a few of these out. And I know I had to kind of sacrifice quite a few to uh, make it to a price point that I thought was reasonable. Um, there we go. So, like I mentioned, this is still a little bit on the sheer side. can still see a little bit of the visible nail line there, but it's okay. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup around the edges. Then I'm going to add that one more layer on that nail I messed up. And then we'll go on to top coat. Um, after I get another drink. God, my bottle is so wet. It's like just on the verge of where I would turn on my air conditioner. <clears throat> Hot enough that I'm kind of uncomfortable, but like... You know, hopefully it's going to cool off shortly here because it's after six already. Uh, too many social media sites. You know, it it's something that it's like, you know, as an online personality or whatever, you feel pressure to have all these different social media sites. And it's like something has to give somewhere and something always ends up suffering. Right now, my blog and my Instagram are both suffering and I'm trying not to you know, let this Twitch thing take away from other things. I'm trying to hope that it's just an addition because it is, it's like, it's during stuff I would normally be doing and it doesn't take a lot of editing, but there are other pitfalls to uh, getting it all set up. Hmm. Hmm. My private rainbow and that's a lot sheer. I, if my nails weren't still wet, I would go and look because I, had all these still together no wait that's not them that's the other polishes i was looking at oh they're right here hmm. hold on just a minute i don't i'm trying to read the bottles like on the floor without again messing up another nail i don't think i have mega x but i have a couple of the other um uh, 
holographic ones, I think. Maybe, you know, once I get this top coat on, if you guys want, I will pull out the rest of the polishes from this haul and you guys can have a look. Uh, yeah, I hope Sasha will level it out too. I don't know if it'll get rid of that. Like, it looks, it looks like a dent on camera. It's actually not. I, I don't even know how to describe exactly what it is. But the polish is smooth, but the finish is no longer smooth. Um, I've got my cleanup brush here. It's just a like medium sized flat brush from Michaels. It's a, it's a, I don't even know what this is, a Royal Brush number six shader. The exact one is linked in my YouTube videos. Hello, Starlore. Um, the exact one is linked in my YouTube videos and eventually I plan to, uh, get like a similar thing for here on Twitch that shows like my most commonly used items so that I can just like reference people to somewhere where there's a actual link. And then I've got my, my little dish of acetone just off to the side. Um, like I mentioned, I'm not the neatest painter and I'm okay with that. Sometimes... I will really try to do a neat job, especially if I'm like in a hurry and I don't have time to do any cleanup. But otherwise, for me, it's usually easier to just give in and do a little bit of cleanup once I'm done painting. Make sure that the cuticle is nice and neat and smooth and that there's not a bunch of polish on the sidewalls. And this also gives the polish just a little bit of time to set. I mean, Seche Vite is intended to go over wet polish, but I mean, if it's too wet, it, you're just gonna, you're gonna kind of regret it because if you use a heavy stroke, kind of like we were talking about with stamping actually, but you won't see the smear like that. It'll almost wrinkle the polish though. So I, I do recommend letting your polish set like almost dry to the touch before going in with top coat. But I know it's definitely, I mean, like I could get another one of those dents super easily if I were to knock these nails into anything. I use three pretty thick coats, so I know it's nowhere near dry yet. But Sesh Feet will take care of all that. Tamashi the Muse, hello. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you guys, I really, everybody that's here, everybody that's chatting, everybody that's lurking, thank you so much for, uh, oh no, I almost, I almost did it again to the same nail. <laughs> the way I was holding my hand for the thumb, um, I almost smooshed right on that same nail again. Um, I, I was in the middle of trying to say a big thank you to everybody that's here, everybody that's chatting, everybody that's lurking, um, you know, this isn't a scheduled day for me, and I really wasn't sure what to expect. I thought, you know, might have my first stream to zero people. So that all you guys showed up and uh, wanted to hang out and nail polish and chill. Thank you. Like, honestly, I, I can't imagine the the novelty ever wearing off. It's like, it's it's kind of how I felt when I started on YouTube and after I did one water marble tutorial I thought, well, I've I've shown people how to do it. I don't have to do any more and then people were like, "We want more." And I'm like, "Well, okay." So, the whole streaming thing, it's like, "Well, you know, is anybody interested in this?" And apparently, you guys are either interested in the pretty colors or interested in interested in me, which is even like more flattering. And, uh, or maybe interested in each other. If you guys, if I get to the point where people are showing up just because my community is that awesome and they want to hang out with the community, I consider that also a compliment. To me, a, co a good community is so much of what makes a good streamer. And, uh, you know, you guys have me on such the right path to having an absolutely absolutely awesome community yeah exactly barbie doll barbie dog <laughs> uh because sometimes it's like i don't know i remember back in the days before i discovered sesh feet how frustrating it would be to do a manicure and you'd think it was dry and it wasn't really dry 
And for all the drawbacks to Seshvit, and, you know, even though it doesn't work for anyone, for me, or for everyone, I should say, some people just seems to, like, knock it along with their body chemistry. Uh, but for me, it is such a go-to. I'm not going to say I'll never switch away from it, but it's probably one of my favorite things in my, you know, my nail polish arsenal. Because it makes it makes all kinds of things possible that otherwise would not be possible and uh for me it's invaluable that's not to say there aren't other good quick dry top coats out there personal growth through colette and her nail art that's that would be so awesome <laughs> like and, and i know i mean it's you know say it kind of jokingly i i assume but there have been times when I've like actually helped people and you know, although I already enjoy it and I have a lot of fans and every comment makes it worthwhile. Like when somebody tells you that, you know, you really, you really helped them or you really made their day when they were having a really horrible, horrible day. I mean, there's something special and kind of addictive about that. It's like, well, on a time where I might say, I don't feel like doing this, but knowing that I'm not just doing this, I'm doing, doing good work. If you want to say that, uh, it makes a difference. Cannot imagine your life without such feet. I know it's like, I, I was so, uh, ignorant of nail polish stuff. And then like when I found nail polish blogs, it was like opening up this whole, other world of of possibilities with nail polish to me like i already knew that i i love nail polish i'd have to go back and check but i think i had over 300 bottles of polish before i started blogging which i mean for most normal people would seem absurd double stamp you know i thought about doing some stamping and I was looking through my image plates and I just couldn't decide. And I ended up just deciding to go with a normal manicure because I've spent a lot of money on image plates and I have some more than some, I would say probably most of my plates still have their, uh, their plastic skin on them. They've, they've never been used. And then it's like, but I still want to buy more. It's like, I mean, I don't want to say it's an addiction, but it's it's a little bit of a of a habit and, you know, would be a problem if I couldn't control myself. I feel like I can control myself. I just don't usually bother to. Oh, Barbie, that's so sweet. I really, and you know, that's an, another facet. Like I've talked about some of the reasons I started streaming. I feel like I get more of a connection and even can make an awful say more of a difference, but you know, interacting with you guys in real time is a, a completely different level than just responding to questions and stuff on YouTube and comments that maybe I'm answering comments that were, you know, sometimes sure, maybe five minutes ago, we'll say that's fast on YouTube or half an hour some of them are from 12 hours ago, or if I don't make it to comments someday, maybe they're from two days ago. This is, maybe I should go like this. I mean, this is a lot different. Uh, just notice the kitty cam. Yeah, he's pretty sacked out today. He just, uh, I think he just ate and then he came in here and sacked out. I actually, I started streaming and then I looked to see if he was even in here with me. Oh, sorry. Jostled everything. Just developed this nail art hobby now that you're retired. That's cool. That's an awesome hobby. You know, when I was working an office job, so many people were like, oh, I could never retire. I don't know what I'd do with myself. And I'm like, do you, do you not have a hobby? Do you not have something that you want to be a hobby? Like, there's so many things to do. They're probably feeling neglected. Yeah, you know... They they probably are. They're shut away in a drawer, away from most of the other nail art supplies. Probably in there, all those little uh, Mo Yu girls just crying to each other. 
yeah, the exchange of ideas. I mean, the nail polish community and, and I'm not even, I wouldn't even consider myself a super active member of the community, but the nail polish community is an awesome one. We're going to do top coat now. And, and in case you didn't know, after this conversation, we're using Sesh Veet. So, and I do have a tendency to get this on my skin too, but I find it easier to either do two cleanups or just to wait until I wash my hands a couple times and the excess will peel off. I almost always uh, will clean up the color before I do the top coat. So I'm just going to be generous with this. And does the camera pick that up? Sometimes top coat is my favorite thing. Like that, uh, that boiling hot lava manicure. I was already in love with that. And after I top coated it, it was like, it was great. Stamping and nail foil art. I, I am learning to love nail foils again. I had a, uh, yeah, not sponsored. Unless, yeah, you want to send me some, send me a big old thing of Sesh Viet and some money. That would, that would be lovely, Sesh Viet company. Um, what was I even talking about? Oh, nail foils. I had originally bought a set from, I don't know, Amazon or eBay or maybe some other like nail polish site. Oh, I was going to put another layer on this nail, wasn't I? I don't, well, yeah, we'll do one and then we'll come back to it in a minute. Um, and I tried it. I followed the directions. I used the nail foil glue. I used the special nail foil top coat that came with it and it crackled and it crazed and it didn't even wear for a day. And I was so disappointed and sad. And I tried again. I did a bunch of tests. I tried, I think, every single other top coat that I owned at the time. And I found one that gave the least amount of cracking to it. And I tried it again. And it still wore for crap. I got like maybe a day. But it was just so disappointing that I was just like, these these look so pretty and I can't get that look on my nails and I just packed them away in a drawer. And then after I got my, uh, my gel polish, water marble is my forte. It really is. And it's, it's kind of weird that it got to be, um, after, after I got my gel polish and I had always heard that gel polish was the best for nail foils because get a little bit of a better angle here um because it made them not not crack and they would wear longer and i couldn't find those nail foils that i had originally bought and i knew i knew i hadn't gotten rid of them because it's a nail polish accessory and i just i would never even if i think i'm not probably ever going to use it i mean i have a collection and a collection means that you don't get, well I actually I don't know if that actually is a real rule of collecting <laughs> that you don't get rid of anything but I I really try not to get rid of anything unless there's like a reason to get rid of it and so I ended up buying some new nail foils and using them and got a couple more ideas for stuff to do with them but I started wondering like god what did I do with these old nail foils and I've been trying to get my room organized because I have a very small space with a lot of nail polish and I really need it organized. And I literally thought I had been through every box of storage, every drawer, everything. And then I opened this one drawer and at the very back tucked underneath stuff and like, obviously put in a place where I did not expect to need to access it anytime soon was my original box of nail foils. And it had what none of the sets that I ordered from Amazon had, which was a smooth hollow nail foil. All my experiences on Amazon with nail foils, well, total of two, just trying to be very light with this one since I just added that last coat. Uh, even the ones that say you get what's pictured, you don't get what's pictured. All the, it's all random. And, uh, if you're okay with that, I mean, you're going to get some, some cool looking foils, 
But if you really want something specific, you need to go probably to a site that either has specific kits, not just like a kind of grab bag, or where you can actually buy individual rolls at a time. Yeah, getting the drops to spread, it really, it, it can depend. I, I joke sometimes that it depends on the phase of the moon. Because I swear to God, sometimes I'll test something and when I go to do a manicure, it reacts completely differently. And just every polish has its own personality in the water. <clears throat> yeah, Starlord. I mean, not every time is a ton of testing. It's been kind of funny, actually, because my first couple of water marble testing streams, I really didn't run into very many problems and I was kind of disappointed because it's like, I want to show people how to deal with the problems. I don't want it to appear to be this easy, but I think the uh, the lava blobicure testing really showed kind of what I was trying to show with water marbling is you got to check it out beforehand. You got to test if you, you know, want it to turn out right. All the others just look like a weird blob of polish. Yeah, I, I mean, I've had that happen too. And sometimes, you know, you think you're dripping the same amount, but sometimes I'll catch myself and it's like, particular with bottles that are maybe like half full when I start and it goes down just a little bit and you're getting just a little bit less on the brush. And by the time you finish your testing and then like maybe five to 10 cups for your hands, the drops you're dripping are a lot smaller than the drops that you started out dripping and it leads to you know a different balance of color in the water marble or a different opacity it's there. there's just so many things to keep in mind when you're water marbling and i feel like i still don't even know half of the things room with custom nail polish shelves like christine yeah i i wish i had a nail polish room i don't our our house is very small this you know, the room you see behind me, yeah, that's my closet. This is my bedroom. I've got a big bed to the side. I've got my Helmers. I I can't imagine how much wall space I would need to display my polishes because um, I'm getting my spreadsheet up to date. I'm still in the process, but I have over 3,000 bottles of polish right now. And uh even if this room was not like already full of stuff, like, you know, there's a bookcase on the wall over here. The wall in front of me has the, uh, the hutch of my computer desk. Even if I had all that wall space, I don't think it would be enough to, uh, to put in shelves. Yeah, I know. And if, if that wasn't crazy enough, uh, Tamashi, uh, my big project that I've been planning forever and still haven't started because it's just intimidating is to swatch all 3,000 of those. And uh, I, I want to do it. It would make so many things so much easier, but some it's one of those projects where it's just like, where do I even start? And you don't want to start in the wrong place because if you get off on the wrong foot, then the whole rest of it is going to be difficult. Um, I'm going to give you guys just a real quick look at some of these other polishes from this collection. Let me just... I'm trying to be mindful because I mean with sesh feet like I can touch these nails I can I can rub against these nails but if I were to you know grab an orange stick and you know go at it yeah it would still dent so sesh feet works miracles but the full miracle does take a little bit longer and the reason I initially got this haul whoa was uh the magician which looks not that impressive here but it's really amazing it's got a lot of different personalities to it and uh i got two bottles of that and then i think all these other colors are from the same collection as a uh, full moon so you know this kind of light and airy looking uh kind of almost pastel hollow and I'm not gonna... Oh, hello, Ribbons. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it was kind of a surprise for me, too. I just thought I would uh, give the low latency thing a try, do a little on-screen quick manicure. And uh, yeah, my setup, I mean, 
you're you're seeing a lot of it like if my face cam were an inch lower you'd be seeing the ring light the ring light is mounted on my desk you actually are well probably shouldn't touch it you're seeing part of the microphone in the cat cam and the kitty is you know literally right off to this side right here <laughs> um yeah happy friday wait friday eve i was gonna say wait a minute <laughs> it's not friday but uh i wouldn't rule out you know showing you guys the rest of my room but there's really not much to see other than a bunch of boxes and a bunch of junk I'm just going to quickly show you guys the rest of this collection since a couple people showed some interest. We have a Sunday brunch and I'm not going to take them out of the boxes because like I said, my nails are mostly dry, not fully dry. Uh, we've got a uh, spring bouquet. It's kind of a green one. We've got rose water. Oh yeah, this is really pretty pink in fact i mean they're a very light pink and a very light green but those would be cute for christmas even uh i've been schooled on how to pronounce this and i don't think this was part of this it's like there were there were two collections last spring and i think this was part of the second one versailles but i i know it's french excuse my my lack of accent uh, we've got Chit Chat, which is a purpley one. And uh, what do I got here? This is a uh, Easy Street, which is actually quite similar to a uh, Full Moon, but it's leaning a little bit more turquoise than blue. Maybe if I get it in here right next to it, you can kind of see. So we've got like the purple, blue, and then the kind of turquoise. And... Uh, Oh, th this was not part of the, uh, the spring collection. This is open fields, and this is a super, you know, let me, this this one I'll take out just because it's such a different finish, but you see I'm using a tool because I don't want to mess up my manicure. This thing, oh, it's just not showing up as awesome on camera. It's much greener. It's looking really gold on camera. It's a lot, a lot greener. It's awesome. Definitely got to give that one a wear sometime. Um, they're great for hollow polish. They really are. I, uh, it, it's, it's been an exercise in willpower not to place another order since I, uh, since I placed this one. But, uh, I've, oops, stop. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Have another accident. I don't know if anybody was quite here at the beginning of the stream when, I had my own stream open in some other window and started instantly getting uh, echoing and uh, took me a minute to figure it out because I am still a noob. Um, what was I even looking for here? Oh yeah, and this, I don't know if I can get this to show it all on camera. It's a duochrome. It's got a blue flash to it. Maybe you can kind of see in the side when I turn it just barely. It's very cute. Um... But yeah, I uh I I don't know that I have if, if anybody has any questions like I said feel free to ask. I don't know that I really have anything else. I was going to check and see uh like who was on and who I wanted to host. I know somebody said there was a Doctor Who. Oh, Darbian is on. I know a lot of you that followed me from YouTube, I kind of introduced you to Twitch. Darbian is the reason that I was introduced to Twitch. He is a Super Mario speedrunner. And uh, I think I'm going to host him when I wrap up here. You have something similar to that from an indie brand here in Brazil. You know, some of those indie polishes are another like black hole I could fall into. Like this was my first ILNP order. I could probably do an order like that or bigger for almost any like almost any new brand because when i when i find a new brand it's just like well you can't just it's like it's like eating potato chips you can't have just one you love doctor are you, oh, are you watching the marathon ribbons you know i think jerry mentioned that last night and he was saying something about how he couldn't stand the the robots the daleks 
But uh, since Darbian is on, which is pretty early for him, I'm going to go ahead and host him. I think I'm just going to do a host, not a raid. I don't want to force you guys to watch a, a non-creative stream if you don't want to, but you may find speedrunning more interesting than you think. It was something that caught me kind of off guard, but I find it like really interesting in a way I can't quite explain and really very relaxing. So I do once again want to thank all you guys for tuning in to this uh, unscheduled, unplanned manicure stream. I really appreciate all the support. I, I, I don't know how to put that into words to really express how much I appreciate it, but hopefully you guys know. Um, like I said, we'll be doing something on Saturday. I haven't quite figured it out yet. But I hope I'll see you guys then. And as always, thanks to what the blah. I can't even I can't even say my own closing line. What what a spaz. Thanks for watching. We didn't choose to be different. We didn't choose to